What's going on, everyone? Happy Monday. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy, having a great day so far, and testing negative for all of those viruses. It is time now for the Monday edition of the Virus Update for Monday, December 1st, 2025. Can you believe it? It's December already. Hey, if you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. If you have been here before, welcome back to my channel. This is where I do the daily virus update on all those viruses that can make us sick. The latest news, data, anything I can find, not just in the United States, but around the world. Want to stay informed? Subscribe down below. Share this with anyone you know. Help my channel grow by hit, giving this video a thumbs up. And remember to hit that notification bell and leave any comments down below. I'm sure there will be something that triggers a comment today because we have a lot of things to get through, such as some news, an update on my long COVID, and we are going to take a look at some uh, wastewater data and hopefully some CDC data. As of the time of this recording, 11.53 a.m., the CDC has not updated yet. They are supposed to update today at some point. But let's start off with this. Flu reaches epidemic levels in Spain. A new, more contagious strain of flu is running rampant in Europe. Uh, we've heard of flu hitting epidemic levels over in Japan, and now it is happening in Spain. Here's some numbers for you. 112 cases of influenza per 100,000 inhabitants. Yikes, that's not good at all, and that is far higher. Here's the last year's number. 12.8 cases per 100,000 inhabitants. Um, that's like 100 higher. That's like, yeah, that's not good. That's really bad. And unfortunately, we're on the beginning stages of something like this happening here in the United States as well. So if you're in Spain right now, take flu very seriously. Flu is bad. All right, I have to show you a couple of things here. New South Wales is experiencing unusually prolonged flu season. This is Dennis, the COVID info guy. I think we have two things from him. And uh, they say when they compare this respiratory illness season to others, they are experiencing a longer tail, which is a concern. And if memory serves me correct, not to uh, mix this up with another country, but if memory serves me correct, over in New Zealand, I believe their season started very early. And I believe Australia, someone remind me, I'm pretty sure we shared something way back several months ago, that in Australia as well, it also started early. So a season that starts early and a season that takes a longer time to end, yikes, that's a long period of time of illness. That is not good. And they are saying this longer tail that they're seeing in New South Wales is a concern. So that's not good. Also this from Dennis, the COVID info guy. And I think this is really interesting. Even two years after infection, around 40% of young people are still experiencing significant fatigue, indicating a major long-term health issue affecting a substantial proportion of youth who have had COVID-19. And as you know, fatigue is one of the issues I deal with from time to time when I'm uh, dealing with my uh, post-COVID, long COVID issues, which I think now this would be a good time to uh, let you know that I did have my checkup today. It was um, six months out. It was time for my checkup. And I talked to my doctor, told him what is going on. The first thing he asked about was my Exolar and me seeing my lung doctor. Well, it's actually a sleep and pulmonary doctor. But the point is, I said, well, the only reason why I stopped the Exolar was because of the insurance issue. That is hopefully going to be rectified in January. And I told him, they said, well, what's going to happen is I'm going to go back on Exolar once I'm back on it, two months later, they're going to perform the pulmonary function test again and see if there's any improvement in my breathing. If there is no improvement in my breathing, then uh, they're going to investigate to see if something else is going on. Also, I mentioned, I mean, you, you've seen my videos enough. If you're new here, I get headaches. I get migraines. It's, uh, it, it, it drives me nuts. And uh, sometimes I get them for day after day for weeks at a time. Sometimes they stop. The summer, I wasn't getting them too much. And then ever since fall came around, we're back to them once again. So I mentioned that, and I said, do you think I should see a neurologist? He actually said it before me. He says, have I seen a neurologist yet? I said, no. Do you think I should see one? And he said, yeah, I think it's it's time. And we both agreed, and I said, do you think it could be because of inflammation from the COVID? And he said, yes. Make sure I tell the neurologist that I had COVID. 
I mean, he's very aware of what's going on with COVID. So that is some good news. And also, not yet, but also there may be another new doctor that I'm going to. And that may be some orthopedic doctor. I've been having issues with my legs. Sometimes when I stand up, it makes like a cracking and popping noise. My dad was with me on my uh, appointment today, and he said, stand up. And sure enough, it happened right in front of my doctor. And he's like, do I ever have pain? I said, once in a while, I do have pain with that. So uh, we discussed that. I really want to do the headache issue first. Then once we can figure that out, then yes, I'm probably going to go see an orthopedic doctor as well. And he said, what that will be is pretty much x-rays, and he says it's good to do all of my due diligence just to cross my uh, T's, dot my I's, check everything. We're also going to do the MRA with the uh, brain scan as well, just to see what's going on here, see what the heck COVID has done to me. But that's all going to start next year. We have to wait for my new insurance to kick in and the new insurance card to come. Once that happens, yes, we're doing that stuff next year. So, that's the update on me and long COVID. We are going to hopefully have some answers in 2026 to just what the heck is going on. All right, moving on. We do have several more things to take a look at here. Taking a look at this. Um, yeah. H5N1, bird flu, is evolving faster than ever. Who and many other uh, working group update confirms H5N1 is evolving rapidly. And there's unfortunately concerns that one day... This could become a pandemic, and if it does, unfortunately, there's a the potential it would be worse than COVID. I know, COVID's a pandemic that never ended, even though everyone wants to move on from it. COVID still exists. Okay, you could make the case that it's endemic and will always be there. You could also make the case that it's still pandemic just based on the sheer number of cases. There's a lot of different ways you could go about it. The point is, COVID is still here. COVID is still causing problems. If bird flu came to town, that would be on top of COVID. That would be on top of flu. That would be on top of norovirus. That would be on top of measles. That would be on top of RSV. That would be on top of people who get pneumonia. That would be on top of all these uh, influenza, the new strain of it. It would be on top of all that. We'd just be adding more pressure to the already very busy hospitals. You get my point here. We don't need another virus circulating around in mass numbers. We just don't need it. All right, moving on to this. Six years ago, not today, but I believe yesterday, a man in Wuhan, China, starts feeling ill, becoming the first confirmed human case of COVID-19. Yikes. Yeah, it's been that long already, and here we are. It still hasn't gone away, as I just mentioned. U.S. cases of norovirus on the rise with double the rate of positive test since August. Yeah, norovirus, it's on the rise here in the United States. Uh, the rate is going up, the number of cases is going up, and look at this, norovirus is the leading cause of foodborne illnesses in the U.S., causing 58% of foodborne illnesses each year, and responsible for about 2,500. They, they put their, uh, I don't know, is that supposed to be 2,500? Or 25,000. They put the comma wrong, or did they put an extra zero? The point is, it causes a lot of outbreaks here in the United States. I can recall going back, I want to say about eight, nine years ago, my grandmother was still living at that time, or my mother's side was still living, and we had her in a nursing home up in Vermont. That's where she was. That's where my aunt lives. And uh, I recall they had a norovirus virus outbreak at that long term care facility, that nursing home. So, yeah, it can get quite serious. All right, this is something that is uh, very interesting. I see so many people say, oh, well, it looks negative to me on their COVID test or even on their three-in-one test or whatever. I just saw something the other day. Don't know what country it is. There's going to be a 14 virus test now. Yeah, I'm sure we're not getting that here in the United States anytime soon. The point I'm trying to drive across here is when you're taking your test, here's one right here from uh, when I was negative one day. See, when you're taking these tests, it's sometimes a good idea. Take your cell phone. Turn on the flashlight. We're going to do it. I'm going to show you this here. Because they're saying even a faint line is positive. I've known about this for some time. Take the flashlight, put it up to the test, and look. Hey, is there a faint line there? If there is, guess what? There's a faint line, say, for COVID. Flu A, flu B. 
that means you have one of those viruses. And God forbid you see multiple ones at once, which can happen. People have had it happen. I had a cousin claim that he had multiple viruses at once last year, which I'm not doubting it. He was really sick with RSV, and I don't know which the other ones were that he had, but it can happen. Please check for a faint line, because you could end up having COVID, flu A, flu B, or whatever your test uh, results, whatever your test is capable of showing. So very important. Take a look at the website. Nothing. Uh, I haven't updated anything. Oh, yes, I did. I updated about the uh, H5N1 bird flu evolving faster than ever. I think I will maybe do an update to my own positive for COVID case. Yeah, I think I may update for that to explain the direction I'm going with the neurologist and everything in an MRA and maybe perhaps an orthopedic doctor. All right, taking a look at what is going on in Canada. My website, by the way, datareport.info. You can find a lot of information there. There are uh, several people now that post tons of great information. I encourage you to go check that out. It is a great resource. The wastewater viral activity levels in Canada for COVID-19 are moderate. Flu A is moderate, flu B is low, and RSV is moderate at this time. Let's take a look at what's going on with the air qualities in the United States. While we're doing that, let's take a hydration break, shall we? Alrighty, yikes. Look at this. This is the first time I've seen this today. Uh, we can see, yeah, very high uh, levels of uh, bad air quality in the West Coast. Also some in the Midwest as well. And then zooming in on Florida. Florida is not doing too bad today. Still seeing some problems in Mexico. Zooming in to the Northeast, a few problems there. In my area here in Philadelphia, not too bad. Hey, I got news. I may be getting one of these air quality meters down the line. I got a new toy that's coming from my weather station. And with that... It will be able to read uh, something called AirLink, which Davis Weather Products puts out. You may have seen there was a Davis advertisement on there. That's that new toy that may be coming, but uh, Christmas time, of course. Um, yeah, so I'll be able to track my air quality here, which is very important because it's good for people who have asthma, like me. Yes, that's part of my long COVID as well. All right, taking a look at Florida. Speaking of air qualities, asthma, breathing issues, look at Pinellas County, Florida. Look how many breathing problem calls. One, two, three of them, multiple sick person calls. Something we expect to see a lot of over the next few weeks. It's that time of year once again. Taking a look at what's going on in Maryland, and I suspect we're going to see the hospitals busier today. And it's still early yet. Wait till this afternoon. Yep, I'm already seeing fours. Still seeing quite a few ones, but uh, more fours than we saw over the weekend. Some threes as well. Not terrible yet, but I bet if I look at this around 3, 4 o'clock, there would probably be an increased number of hospitals dealing with capacity issues. And one means the emergency department is fine. Four being bad, meaning the emergency department is about 131% uh, or greater occupied. Yeah, that's not a good thing whatsoever. Let's see what happened in Philadelphia yesterday for EMS calls, shall we? And on Sunday, 662. Wow, that's really low. I don't know how much longer we're going to see these really low numbers. These are some of the lowest numbers for a period of time that we have seen in a very long time. I really hope this can continue. Let's see what's going on in Montgomery County. And I'm actually present, pleasantly surprised here. Ten total EMS calls. That's not bad because about an hour ago, it was already up to about 15. So it's gone down. And this is the Monday after Thanksgiving. That actually is some good news. Not good news is cardiac arrest in Lower Salford Township. Yikes, uh, that's a pretty serious call. Uh, Chester County, bit of a different story. This looks to be pretty busy. We're seeing sick person showing up multiple times and respiratory difficulty showing up multiple times also. Look how many times heart problems showing up. One, two, three, four times for heart problems. That's not a good thing. Taking a look at what's going on in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. Huh, really busy here as well. So, Montgomery County, you may just be in a law at the moment because other places in southeast Pennsylvania are dealing with issues. These places I'm showing you here are southeast Pennsylvania. Let's take a look at the Pennsylvania hospital situation real quickly, shall we? And we do see there is an issue going on uh, in Fulton County Medical Center. There's a trauma diversion and just a couple hospitals in southeast PA. I don't know what's going on with northeast PA and Lehigh Valley. I don't think that's updated anymore. I don't know why. I really don't. It's showing green, but I don't know if that's actually correct. New Jersey is still updating. we got some problems here. Cooper University Hospital, full and total 
divert for patient volume. Uh, Inspire Medical Center Mannington has a specialty issue. And uh, Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital of Hamilton is uh, dealing with a, a full and total divert for patient volume. Any other hospitals? No. I'm sure there may be a few more as the day progresses. Oftentimes, later in the day, between about 3 and 6 o'clock is the peak uh, time of day. A lot of people, after work and school, ooh, maybe I should go to the emergency room have this checked out. It Trust me, it does actually happen. Let's see if there's any update to New York State for today. 363 cases on the most recent update. That is not new as of yet. All right, let's see. Did we get our update from the CDC? No. It is still saying November 18th at this time, which means we're not going to probably have any new data. Let's see. Let's go to another about flu page. No, that is not updated. So we will try and get this in to tomorrow's video, if it even updates at all. Maybe they're just going to delay it now until... Uh, Friday, I don't know. It says due to the Thanksgiving holiday, resume on Monday, December 1st. Okay, good coming in the afternoon. Oftentimes, the Friday update doesn't come in until 12.30, 1 o'clock, sometimes even 2 o'clock. Let's take a look at a couple of wastewater sites, shall we? We'll do one in each region of the United States, and I'm seeing something I really do not like. Look at the state of Maine. This is set for COVID. Look at that. Yeah, all three wastewater sites that you can see on here. Uh, that's not good. Let's take a look at Lewiston, Maine. Okay, well, it's coming up high, but the level's down. I'm not understanding that. Uh, norovirus is medium. Let's do another site in Maine, because I'm confused by Lewiston, Maine, as to why it's saying high. Okay, this one here, Portland, Maine, is going upward at this time. That's not good. Let's go somewhere in the south now. How about we take a look at North Carolina, Kinston, North Carolina. And we do see here, COVID is in the medium. RSV, wow, whoa, that's uh, very high. Has come down a little bit. That could be wrong. Uh, influenza A is low. Norovirus is high. Keep in mind here, all this wastewater data I'm showing you still probably does not include Thanksgiving. End of this week or early next week is when we will see the effect from uh, Thanksgiving. So any impact, the increasing levels of these viruses from Thanksgiving, maybe next week is when we learn about that. Let's go to Bloomington, Indiana, shall we? We do see COVID is listed high. Influenza A is low, but it is starting to rise. And we see norovirus at this time is listed in the high category. Now let's go out to the West Coast. And that's going to be where we end for today. Uh, let's go far west. Let's see what's going on in Hawaii, shall we? And let's go to Honolulu and see what's going on with the viruses there. We've had problems. COVID is still low. Influenza A is high and continuing to rise. Norovirus is in the medium category at this time, and everything else does appear to be fine. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Monday edition of the Virus Update. If you enjoyed today's update, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe down below. Hit that notification bell. Share this video with anyone you know. And, of course, leave your comments down below. I will see everyone again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Monday afternoon. Thanks for watching.